Hi everyone and uh, welcome back. This is the next video and it's a repair of an a, um, inverter, a mains inverter. This is type uh, 2285 made by uh, Mascot and for those of you who don't know what a mains inverter does basically it converts DC in to mains voltage output so typically a 12 volt uh, DC input uh, usually something like a lead acid car battery and it will convert that into uh, 240 mains uh, this particular one is uh, 300 watt that means 300 watts um, 2 volt e volt RMS which is about uh, about 1.2 amps and in order to produce that it requires 12 volts at roughly around 300 watts again so that's you know around the um, 30 amp mark roughly yeah roughly around 30 amp mark uh, I took a look at the data sheet for this has a peak um, power rating of 500 watts so any inrush current or anything on your devices that you plug into this it can handle up to um, 500 watts should you get a spike or anything like that or it needs that little bit of oomph for uh, you know, a fraction of a second perfectly fine the only trouble is this one doesn't bloody well work hence the repair so um, yeah not too sure what doesn't work with it seeing as that I've only been told um, it don't work properly implying that it must do something but it doesn't you know maybe it doesn't output the right voltage maybe it doesn't output anything maybe it keeps killing batteries who knows so I'm going to give this a bit of a test first then we'll strip it down and see what's wrong internally hopefully it's nothing too serious possibly um, some caps may have gone uh, I don't know maybe um, a choke or something's gone open circuit. Um, I don't know. Maybe an internal fuse. Who knows? Or um, you know, short circuit protection might be permanently running on this thing. You may think it's got a short. So yeah, enough jabbering. Let's get on with it and strip it down. So first things first, before we uh, start powering up this thing, try and plug a battery into it. Because it is a high current, high power device, I don't want to cause any fires or overheat things, um, you know, set cables on fire, etc. should there be any majorly wrong with it. So I'm just going to probe about and see uh, what's what. Let's see if we've got any shorts or uh, low resistances. So got my meter, chucked it on continuity, let me see that, um, so it's on, off, on, might as well switch it on, see what happens, okay, so first things first, do we have any connectivity between the positive and the negative, no, earth, no, oh, was that something, no, might have just been discharged between line and ground, possibly a cap, or something but no looks okay all open circuits on the import just make sure that this is goes to earth yeah chassis earth is connected to mains earth on the opposite side here you see that there we go so there we go the main is perfectly fine because uh, this is a keyed bot, uh, a keyed socket, you need to have a mains cable plugged in in order for the contacts to be open on the uh, live and neutral. So, uh, to check on the supply side, so uh, let's have a check on that. Make sure that there's no shorts on this side and the supply side, which there isn't. Between earth. And neutral earth and live, nothing, nothing. So yeah, all looks okay. No shorts or anything. All right, what I'll do is I'll give this a power up. Got a uh, socket tester, 
or 13 amp sockets this will go up to basically it just tells you whether or not you've got a earth fault phase and the uh, live and neutral being reversed so we've got a neutral fault etc a couple of neons in there just to show whether or not you've got any power so i'm just going to plug that into the front make sure it's all switched off and uh, put the battery to the rear now i've only got a um, small 12 volt lead acid on me my big chunky car battery style one is completely shagged uh, this so uh, I'm going to use this one. This is a 12 volt 7 amp hour battery. So you know, get a couple of amps out of this one on the primary side. So milliamps coming out at the mains. Which side? What am I bloody talking about? Talking shit. And let's get this hooked up. Where have we got a screwdriver? I need to get these uh, screwed into the rear terminals. I do. Ooh, that's not good. That's definitely why it's not working. I don't know if you can see this. In here, on the uh, negative battery terminal, there's no actual screw head. But there is on this one. Alright, so. Yeah, have to get a uh, something in there. Hopefully, I can just about grab hold of it with a flat head. Main, so I can just about get away with this side. Doesn't want to. Get to have to continue this one a little bit later, I think. Shake. Can't actually get in there. Let's see if we can get this out. Yes, I can. If I use a very small driver and just grab hold of what's left of the head. So that is a bit of luck. Let's back some cabling. Side. Right then, that's all in. So, uh, red to red, and uh, that's all right. Any sign of life? Switch it on. No. Green is on, orange amp are normal, well we're not getting anything on the LED. So I very much doubt we'll get anything out. Just plug it in. And no, absolutely nothing dead. Nothing is getting hot, the cables aren't overheating, so it's just the bolts, what's the voltage on the battery. We've got yeah, 30 volts on the lead acid, so it hasn't even dropped down to 12 to say that we've got, you know, it's not drawing any power as such, so you know, this thing is completely dead. And let's open it up and find out what's going on. Alright then, uh, a couple of screws at the rear. Got some down the side, I imagine, holding the heat sinks in place. 
Uh, a few on this side. Let's see what we've got. That battery out of the way. screws. Won't go in off camera. You want to tell me off for doing that, no doubt. I'm getting my hands in the way as usual. But this is a real repair as always. No retakes. But, oh, a couple more at the bottom. Made in a Taiwan. No surprise. Everything nowadays comes from the east. Not much is made in England anymore. Either the America or somewhere in China, Hong Kong, who knows, Taiwan, Korea. Luckily for us, let's see if it's okay. Can we get that pulled out? Nope. We've got heat sinks on our side of the tunnel. If you can see those all screwing down here. So this case, so we'll take all those out. So we can get in there. But looking over it at the moment, there's not really that much. Wrong. This is any scorching on the underside of the board and the arcing. Should really be wearing an ESD strap for this since that got some big chunky caps in here and inductors. Probably got a bit of charge, residual charge in this. But I shall be careful. enough to shift. And we've got a bit of the opposite side. Yeah, earth bomb points out. Down this side. No surprise there, we are dealing with a huge amount of current, up to 40 amps on the DC side. Oh, bloody, we've got another one there. Do we have guns town with the old earth, earth thing of this? Held in. No, no, they're all 
Loose all down there, all down here, there, loose. chunky cap in there to worry about over here that looks fine everything's hot snotted into place nicely no signs of any scorching or burning on that side anything on this side ew i don't know if you can see that but it needs a bloody big clean up on this side so it's actually sat in some liquid at some point it's probably uh, shorted out the board and i don't know if you can actually see that Let's see if we can get in. Mm -hmm. If you can see that, you've got residue all over the board and around the DC contacts down here. You see a little bit of rusting going on just around here, around that area. So you've got a lot of discoloration, so we clean all that up. Definitely, which is probably causing some problems. Uh, can't see much else on here. It's got an internal fuse, I just noticed. Over here. Okay, internal fuse hidden just down here on the DC side, it's a 40 amp automotive one. And we'll pull that one out. And, yep. One culprit, if you can see that. One dead fuse. Let's see if we can get some in on that there. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but it's completely open. So we'll replace that. Right. Right then. Got some solvent cleaner, replacement fuse, and the cloth. Just going to clean over a roof the board first. This is a uh, electronic solvent cleaner. So Basically, it might be with a uh, brush on the end to get rid of this uh, minimalised crap crap that's in the back of the board. It might actually be flux residue on the of the board. This could be just flux residue on here. I'm just paranoid. And if it is, it's a bad job, it's not, it hasn't been cleaned up at all. See the difference. You can see it's got the loop in that one in the centre, whereas the dead one, absolutely nothing. You can see clear through that one. There you go. Combination. There we are. 
Haha. <laughs> uh, replacement one in. And let's put this back together and uh, see what happens. Take off this mylar first, slide it in, then we can slot the mylar back in place. And for those of you who are wondering why we would need to convert DC to mains, well, it's mainly for the outdoor environment. If you go into the field and you need some uh, power, well, this is these are what you use in order to get your mains electricity. Typically about 300 watts nowadays. You know, one of these could power a nice uh, flat screen TV quite happily. Uh, to back in the day, maybe one very small portable black and white TV that you'd take camping. Use them in caravanning and what have you. If you want to get some main electricity so you can watch something. There you go. In the case of what we're using for here, this one was for some uh, test equipment for a radar system. Apparently it was out in the field and they needed a uh, some power to run the uh, supplies and some arbs. Let's only use these. And then, uh, yeah. Let's get these in place right now. I'm going to find a here, I believe. I think they're the same. Use the screw holes. Oh, 
this is bloody fiddly. So many bleeding screws. Get this thing back together with. Doing the earth bond points first. to say is it's sometimes quite hard to get these back together than it is stripping them apart.
Hopefully that fuse was the only thing wrong with it. And it works first time. Oh boy, I don't relish taking this apart again. But whenever you're dealing with any main stuff, it's always good practice to make sure the case is always put together properly. Switch anything off. Judging by this, probably just a bit of moisture in there, which is why the bottom of the board was a bit ropey. And hopefully, it was just someone being an idiot and trying to put too much of a load onto it, which is why it blew the fuse. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. I'll just give it a test now. See what it does. So, it's off at the moment. Plus. Minus, minus, right. Will it spark? Will it go off? Bang? Will it do something? Whoa! It did something. It did spark, so I'll just check. There's no shorts or anything. No, no shorts. No. I think that's just plugging it in. Just that initial uh, bit of current. Right then. It's all plugged in, we'll switch it on. What happens? Yep, green light. Bleep to say that it comes on, so we've got life. Nothing is overheating or anything, so I'll switch that off. Plug in our handy test out, see what it does. And yep, both lights on, live and neutrals are fine. That can come out. And for the ultimate test, so yes, plug in a decent load. So I've got a lamp here. It's a 40 watt lamp, so it's not going to draw too much uh, current. It's just a 40 watt halogen. Now we can, you know, 100, 200 milliamps. Coming out, and will it work? And hey, look at that! Yep, we've got power. Seems to be okay. The overheating battery is okay. Seems pretty stable. Yeah. Fan. Yep, running okay in the uh, power supply. I'd say that is running reasonably okay. A quick check of the voltage. Should be around 12 volts on the uh, battery as opposed to 13 before. Let's have a quick squeeze. Which, yeah, there we go. 12 volts roughly. Yeah, so, yeah, drawing okay. No problems. Brilliant, I'll say thumbs up. That's a reasonably good test. Unfortunately, I don't have a big enough battery to test it at the full 300 watts, but. Yeah, I'll let uh, the guys know that this is yeah, reasonably okay. So I'll tell you that's a reasonable thumbs up. Just a fuse have gone. And, uh, yeah, probably just a matter of overrunning, overloading. 
that? Yeah. Screw the rest of it in. Put down the screws in and uh, send it on its way. If there's any problems with it, I know that it will come back and I'll give you an update. If you don't see any more videos relating to this one, I'd say the job's a good one. Right. Last few screws in. Initial spark. It freaked me a bit. I hate seeing sparks. Oh. But you know, draw in a couple of amps. It's a 40 watt halogen, so that's going to be what? About four amps off the. Uh, about three amps. Three, three and a half amps, 12 volts. 240, 40 watts, yeah, uh, a couple of amps. And then it's going to initially spark. There we go, so, job done. See you uh, next time.